Hello and thanks for watching this very last local edition. I'm Eric Watilla. As many of you already know, our newscast is shutting down due to a lack of funding caused by the poor state of the economy. Since today will be Local Edition's last day on the air, I thought it would be fitting to end the way we started with one of the very first features we aired back in our early days is TV Cadillac. Benjamin Ari now reports on a high-tech sport many local residents are taking part in. Eric, I'm standing in the Manistee National Forest where this device is part of a high-tech treasure hunt taking place all throughout the world. The challenge is just finding the cash, not so much what's in it, but just the enjoyment of being out and coming to places that you wouldn't come to before. It's a sport called geocaching, and for local resident Frank Renz, one trip was all it took to get hooked. We found our first cache in May of, of 2001. We found it about six months after it was here, and we've been hooked ever since and do it on a regular basis. Geocachers like Renz start their search by logging onto the official website of the sport, where users maintain a database of cache locations. From there, they load the coordinates into their GPS, and it's off into the field to search for the treasure. How close are we now? 300 feet. After a bit of hiking, the GPS says that the cache is near. We're going to be walking up in the cache now. Caches are usually hidden, so when the GPS pointed us to a large tree, it came as no surprise to Renz. He's seen caches in all kinds of locations. All different terrain, all different challenges. Um, they range from light posts in Walmart parking lots to uh, caches that are on the side of hills or down, uh, down steep hills. After finding caches in so many different locations, locating the cache in the tree was a simple task. From there, it was time to take a treasure and leave one behind. Every cache has a logbook that you signed to prove that you were here. Um, and there will be trinkets that you can trade things for. After trading treasures, the cache returns to its hiding place. The geocacher heads back to the internet to post their find, and the hunt is over, at least for now. And for more information on geocaching, or to get started yourself, you can visit www.geocaching.com. I'm Benjamin Ari, reporting for TV Cadillac. Now back to you, Eric. And once again, that was a report filed by Benjamin Ari during our first day on the air. Coming up next on Local Edition, I'll have a final goodbye as our newscast signs off. Stay with us. Hi, I'm Chef Herman from Herman's European Cafe in fabulous downtown Cadillac. Thank you for the last 25 years of your loyal support. To thank you even more, we have reduced menu prices, have introduced a lot of half orders, just so you can try us out if you haven't been here before. Thank you again, and I hope I see you and my staff is ready to help. And come and see me in the kitchen. We all know how fun it is to shop locally, but it really goes a lot further than that. Manistee is such a unique area, and when you choose to support local businesses, you're helping Manistee maintain its distinct qualities and unique personality. Remember, shop local. Welcome back to Local Edition. As I first stated on our newscast last week, and have mentioned just a few times today, I'm sorry to report the Local Edition will be signing off the air after today. Our 5.24 p.m. airing will be the last. Our sign-off comes primarily from a lack of funding caused by the state of the economy. That's caused us, like many businesses these days, to evaluate our operation, leading to the decision to shut down. I personally have been involved in this operation from the very start, and it's been a great and enjoyable journey serving the community over the past two years. I've covered countless interesting stories and met a lot of wonderful people, and I'd like to thank you all for your positive feedback and support of our newscast. As I wrap up this final local edition, I leave with a bit of advice from my own experience, and that's to follow your dreams and never hesitate to do so, even if your dreams might seem impossible. Two and a half years ago, I would never have imagined that I could start a program like Local Edition and keep it running as long as I did. In better times, I think our newscast would be able to run even longer. And even though we might be ending our program, I fully believe that when one door closes, two more will open, and I look forward to the opportunities that the future holds. I encourage you all to remember this advice and never give up on your dreams, even if things might seem tough. As this final local edition comes to a close, I leave you with the famous words of Edward R. Murrow, good night and good luck.